Hello everyone, this is Keys. Uh, today I'll be painting a scrub jay. My primary colors are going to be titanium white, of course, ultramarine blue, uh, yellow ochre, and then here I take a brief moment where I try to decide between cadmium orange and burnt sienna, but ultimately decide on the burnt sienna. Um, cadmium orange is probably my most recent color crush um, in that I like to find excuses to put it into things, but I was worried that it would be overpowering and distracting in this particular painting. Uh, so here I've put down a bunch of base color. Um, it helps to set the general lighting and color tone of the scene because in nature then you'll have this light bouncing all around and all of the colors are going to be reflected off of one another uh, throughout the same scene. And so by painting underneath, um, by painting with these colors underneath, even if it's not in a very defined way, it helps to add those tones of colors throughout the painting because usually whenever you paint over it, some of the under color will, the underpainting will still show through. Um, so then a loose sketch and I am off onto the background. So I wanted to make sure the background stayed pretty out of focus and not very distracting. And so I work pretty thickly um, in blending and dabbing with my brush to try to make sure that there are no hard edges and that um, everything kind of molds together. You can kind of get an idea of what's going on in the back. You can see that there's some sky, some leaves, some trees, but it, it's not going to be enough that you're going to be too distracted by it, hopefully. <laughs> um, and so I spend a little bit of time trying to get this right. Um, it is uh, a little bit easier to get your background finished first whenever you're painting and then slowly move forward into your foreground just because um, if you can move in that direction then you can easily just cover up the background um, as you add your foreground objects. It's um, just a simpler workflow. And so um, here I start blocking in the J a little bit more. Uh, you'll see that I hold up the canvas sometimes instead of laying it flat. Um, that's because whenever the canvas is laying down flat, you get this perspective distortion where it can be really hard to accurately judge um, the proportions of what you're actually looking at. Um, and so by holding it up so that it is a perpendicular plane to my line of sight, then that makes it a lot easier for me to make sure that I'm actually drawing things um, correctly. And so um, here I'm getting most of the general idea um, put down for the J here. Um, yeah, and then I start sketching in the branches a little bit as well. Um, I wanted the branches to stay light and warm to help differentiate them from the overall darker and cooler background. Um, and so I just kind of sketch them in with some sienna mixed with white. Titanium white is really, really opaque. And so you, in general, if you need to cover up something, then white will help you make sure that whatever is underneath doesn't show through too much. Um, but you have to be careful because white will also fundamentally change um, the properties of the paints that you mix it with. Um, they can become kind of chalky or pastel. Um, so it's a balance. Um, And so I start working in on the feathers on the belly a little bit more. 
um, I add in some brown undertones into the jay's feathers because even though it is mostly just an off-white underneath it, um, like I said, with light bouncing around its environment, then there's lots of brown warm colors underneath it from the branches and from the ground even though we can't see it it's still there um it's that light reflecting off of the ground and hitting the underside of the jay makes it have a warmer browner look um it can be a little bit tricky to make sure that these lighting effects don't make it look like the, the bird is actually brown underneath um <laughs> I want you to still look at it and say, oh, that's a jay with a white belly. Um, and so it takes a couple layers and a couple of mixings to kind of convey that. Um, white can be really tricky in that way because it is, oh, white usually has a lot more color to it than we think of it as having. Um, and so being able to weave those colors in is really, really important to give the white some body and make sure it actually looks like it belongs in the scene. And so I go back in here. Um, I'm starting to try to pull things together a little bit, define these branches a little bit better. Um, since before they were mostly just flat, um, I want to go in there and add some, well, you can see a bird, it's okay. Um, so adding in the forms really helps. Here I have to add some little details on the feet and legs of the bird um, since birds usually have kind of scaled looking legs um, then adding in those scales is a nice little touch um, even though it can be tricky because it can be hard to draw um, little bird feet with paint brushes that aren't always as exact as we may wish that they were. Um, I do have to do a little bit of extra googling to make sure that I can see clearly um, different things that I want to draw on the bird that may not be so clear in my reference photo. Um, this part was the underside of the tail. That wasn't very obvious in the photo that I took, but I wanted to be able to paint. So here I go, and I blend out some of the, the brown underneath the tail a little bit better. And I add in some finishing touches, do some really light details to try to make sure everything looks good and well defined. And then there we go. Um, and there is our finished scrub jay painting. So it was a relatively quick one. Um, maybe two hours. I'm not sure off the top of my head. But um, yeah. So thank you for watching.